What is up, heroes? It's Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Doki Doki Literature Club Blind. In the last episode, we shared our poem with Yuri and Natsuki and Sayori, and it led to quite a bit of a fight between Natsuki and Yuri, which didn't turn out super well, but we ended up siding with Yuri, and in that episode, we learned a lot about the characters themselves, and now it's time to make another poem, it seems. Yeah, so we're on our way home. And Sayori is going to be accompanying us. Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Ooh. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> what, could, what could we possibly be referring to? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. It's only because we're around. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't... You don't hate them, do you? <clears throat> no, I don't hate them. I just want your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Huh? Boy, why, why is that incident related to potentially being good friends with Sayori? Hmm. <clears throat> you know, Sunahara, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone's what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. That's... <laughs> Interesting. Every day is going to be so much fun. <clears throat> I'm sure it will be, he says, knowing that there's a dark twist in this game. <clears throat> it looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to, does it really need to stop there? Oh, I didn't even realize Sonata was worrying about being in the friend zone. We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay, yeah, let's do this. All right, we're gonna write another expertly crafted poem. I dig this music. <clears throat> That's so cool. What happened, do we get anything for clicking on them? No, it doesn't seem so. Okay, so clearly um, some of these are the same. I wonder if they're actually like rearranged with an intention so that you kind of select uh, it's it's really difficult to describe <laughs> I'll, I'll pass for the time being i'm gonna go with vivid again um so that you're essentially like choosing against words you chose previously or something like that we can go with um some nice horror over <laughs> over pure existence and doki doki <clears throat> i don't know why i got this little cough right now um alone essence misfortune electricity depression excitement dream what do we want to go with? let's go with essence Vertigo headphones. I like I like raindrops. I dig it. <clears throat> intellectual. I dig. Oh, intellectual or games. We're gonna go with intellectual. What else do we have? Bouncy. Um, we're gonna go with aura. And then anime. And then hopeless eternity graveyard. We'll go with eternity. Infinite because because math. Do we want to go with Lollipop again? Vivacious. I'm going to go with Lollipop again. <laughs> um, what else? Peace, silly, variants. I like, ooh, I like variants. I wonder if the, like, actual interactions with the girls changes, or if it's just some sort of, like, end result. Like, would all the events from the previous, like, poem sharing event have been the same, regardless of what we picked? I don't know. I'll find out after I beat the game, I guess. Let's go with Puppy. Puppies are cute. After image. Interesting. Time, entropy, we're going with entropy again. Desire, hope. If you know me and you've been watching anything on my channel, you know hope is a pretty big theme here. What else? Rose, ribbon, smile, insight. Ooh, I dig insight. Vibrant, destiny, not a big fan of destiny. Not my cup of tea. Uncontrollable, unstable, unrestrained, wow. Ambient, ooh, I dig that. What else we got? Shiny, because of course. And then we got a lot of shorter words here. Dark, ooh, I dig it. Inferno, that's a cool word. I like it. A lot, lot more negative this time around, but do some cool words and hopefully Yuri digs it. I mean, I feel like that's the route I'm leading towards, but <clears throat> another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Sunohara. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. Of 
course she is. She's Sayuri. I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. I mean, what if she likes you, though? But I guess it's always the simple things with you, anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? Okay. So we're going to have like one day where our pre-poem sharing event is going to be with each of the girls and then maybe a character specific event at the end or something? No thanks. Whoa, Riff. Eh, uh, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Society? Ooh, called out. Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. <laughs> I just wanted to look at it. Ah, uh, Society nervously retreats, or retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Probably doesn't make that big of a sound. Only two small coins fall out. Ha <laughs> ha. I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayeti. That's not fair. How did you even know? It sounds like this comes from experience. It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. Could be both. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry! <laughs> and so that only leaves the one option. That's really funny. I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. That's not always true. And then Yuri jumps in. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is her... Her face is in her book, as always. Ah, uh, I wasn't listening or anything. Of course not, that's why you just randomly laughed. It was just something in my book. Yuri, tell Sunohara to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayuri. Besides, you should only buy what you can, re what you can responsibly afford. True that. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Oof, bodied, put down. Ah, I also appreciate her vocabulary. I think I feel like it's a little intentional um, tweak by the developers. Did I just... I didn't mean that. <laughs> I got too absorbed into my book. Uh, and forgot how to be a real person, I guess. I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... <clears throat> There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Revolution? Retribution. <laughs> that. <clears throat> Still coming from you, Saiyadi. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? Hints that darker undertone of Doki Doki Literature Club. Don't let her fool you. Saiyadi knows exactly what she's doing. <clears throat> After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But what? <clears throat> you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on. <laughs> Give me more credit than that, Saiyadi. What? Is there a slap going on? Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. What? What was that? Eh? A cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? Just randomly appearing cookies? It's because I paid my restitution. Oh boy. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I appreciate it. it. I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Oof, body. Natsuki, that's so nice of you. I'm so happy. So typical of Tsundere to deliver, like, a nice thing in a very harsh manner. Sayuri hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayuri rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Little nom nom voice. Hmm. Sayuri suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. So now we have now we have evidence again of the uh, talking with her mouth full. Tisk tisk tisk. I bit my tongue. <laughs> Deserved more of that retribution. You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez, beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Oof. Rip. Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Sayuri gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, oh, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayuri off her. Um, 
What? Sayuri suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! So, so sneaky. Did you seriously just do that? Uh-huh. Mouthful, Sayuri trots away to safely. Yuri and I laugh as well. This is pretty funny. This is pretty funny. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayuri... Eh? Natsuki glances around. No, Monica? Monica isn't in the club room. Hmm. Where is Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual, especially for someone who's such a, you know, perfectionist, maybe on top of themselves. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She's probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh, you don't think she... She has a... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. A boyfriend? She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Oof, yikes. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Uh, there you are. Finally makes her way. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh, Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. <laughs> That's really funny. You're so strong-willed. A boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> I appreciate the honesty, at least. That makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it, since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. I, I don't, really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. I appreciate that, you know, she's like, oh, you know, I want to do this thing. I want to learn about this. I, I'm just going to start doing it. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's, do you know Tizanarkin from Final Fantasy X? Because I dig that on the piano. Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay. That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Sunahara. Monica smiles sweetly and bumps every other character off the screen, it seems. Ah, uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. <laughs> Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. Some cookie shenanigans. I choose to leave outside his mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Oof. Called out. We all know those people, though, that really never stop complaining, right? Please don't be that person. <laughs> it looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayuri somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared in the closet. To her manga collection, I'd imagine. Hey, Yuri. Eh? Ah, I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Ah, uh, no, I was kind of just waiting for you. Ah, uh, if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. I don't know if this is like... Have we already kind of committed to Yuri's route at this point? Is that why this is happening? I'm surprised they would just push one character during these sort of like free time events so early in the game. Huh. Regardless, actually I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. <laughs> Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself, as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm so prepared. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. That doesn't surprise me. I feel like that sort of... Well, I guess it's maybe more commonly associated with like the kind of smarter intellectual person to be a little bit more calculated or methodical. But it's not necessary by any means. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Uh, I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? What could possibly go wrong? Shall we go then? Yeah. Hmm? Where are you two off to? 
Uh, we're just, you're, you was going to make some tea, so I suddenly realized how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. That's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? <laughs> Called out. That's... I'm her bodyguard. I need to make sure there are no people also trying to lay claim to our hot water. Monica, please mind your own business for once. Oof, called out. Or do you want me to tell... Or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve Sunhara in club activities? Ooh, valid argument. Uh, my mouth gapes. They're in the middle of a, uh, a duel. I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Hmm. Then let's go, Sunhara. Yuri quickly exits the room, and I follow. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. Huh? What's going on, Yuri? You, you doing alright? I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri? I, I just... Something about the way she said that made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but I mean, it's not like you should be so upset with yourself for, you know, any sort of conflict. It's okay to, you know, fight back a little bit, to, to push back. Obviously, you need to keep it within check. You need to make sure you're doing it for the right reasons, and you can always do so in a more effective manner. But that action inherently is not something bad or worth punishing yourself over, you know? I wasn't expecting it, but it's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Sunohara, I, I mean, you also can't really assume that she was, like, judging Yuri or anything like that. Like, maybe, if anything, I'd say it's playful banter about, like, clearly, just given the game and everything, all the girls like Sunohara, and I'd imagine that sort of banter is inherent in such a group dynamic. Regardless, how come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because... Nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions, and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Uh, no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? You can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend? You say? <laughs> that blush, though. Uh, um... Yuri lifts her head. Sunahara, I really like being friends with you. Daw, thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that, but I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway, uh, yeah, shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. No special art or anything? I'm surprised. Sunahara, do you like oolong tea? Ah, uh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? <laughs> of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. True, true. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. Huh? Er, <laughs> in that case, you'll only be even more impressed. True. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking. And I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. Interesting. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do. <laughs> when it's you who's around, anyway. Aw. That, that comfort level, though. That's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Sunahara. Sorry, this episode keeps getting interrupted. It's a little frustrating to say the least. Now my emotions are starting to show, but it's very endearing. Oh, is it now? That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. <laughs> I watched Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Sinhara, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Interesting. <laughs> Why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Really? I feel like we're supposed to, or we're tempted to initially think, oh, it's because she's like reading all the time. 
But that's not actually the case, and there's some much more dark, depressing reason for all this back pain. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my... Ah... Uh, my... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading. Yes! Yeah, I, to I totally knew that... Yeah, there's no way that that's actually the reason. I have terrible reading posture, so that's why we should sit on the floor. Someone who reads as often as she does, there's no way she can afford to have such terrible reading posture. Fair enough. And she obviously sounded like she just filled in with whatever Sunohara suggested. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Saidi's candy radar. I take it since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall and teacups at our sides, and none of the other girls are watching, jealous, interested in the invent at all. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position at la as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. Ooh. <laughs> I can't see too well. <clears throat> Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. Not just elbow now, shoulder too. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Oh my goodness, I'm a teenage boy, and my arm is touching that of another girl's. Ooh, I don't know if I can focus on anything. <laughs> Yuri is always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup? Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing, or really. <laughs> Has she? Um, she wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all my willpower to focus on reading. And after a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, that's... That's okay. I won't take any. Uh, are you sure? Well... If I touch it, then I might get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. <laughs> Such a good point. Appreciate taking or taking good care and you know protecting the condition of your items. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. We're treated to some nice art. Is that like a snow effect or something? In or is this just like the sparkles? in Sunohara's eyes imposed upon Yuri's image. <laughs> Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it in my mouth. Then I take another chocolate, and I hold it up to Yuri. Oh my god, he's gonna feed her. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. <laughs> But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. What key? <laughs> the way it's placed in her mouth right now in this picture does not look like it would stay. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh. Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. <laughs> did... Did I just... <laughs> Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um... Sunahara... Sorry... I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh, that's... Well... You were just helping. That's something that friends do. Yeah, totally, totally just friends do that. Right? I mean... Not really in this kind of context, but... Yeah! That's all it was. Sunohara, you're not even helping yourself if your aim is to, you know, be in this club with these beautiful girls, apparently. Yeah. Then... You don't need to stop or anything. Oh boy. I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. I raise my arm. Ah, uh, like before. Yuri parts her lips, but it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. <laughs> okay, everyone! Whoa. Uh. Yuri jolts back. That's really funny. <laughs> what an abrupt uh, snap back to reality, I guess. 
It's time to share poems. Sonata, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. I'll... I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Alright, so now it's time to finally share poems, and we're going to do that in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I got a little frustrated with interruptions and stuff, but it was, again, really funny to see the interaction between Sunohara and Yuri, and typical young high school romance, I guess, and, you know, getting excited about, oh man, our shoulders are touching, and the awkwardness of feeding each other in a totally platonic friends, you can't see my air quote, manner. And, uh, yeah, we were treated to a little bit more art, which was pretty well done, and, yeah, it was, it was a fun episode. I do like that the characters are taking on more, um, personality now, and the interactions are, you know, more than just, Hi, I'm this character. Hi, I'm this character. You're supposed to identify me as this type of character, etc. Um, and we'll see how this poem sharing goes. I'm curious to see if their poems get any more intense than before, or if you know, our poems actually matter all that much. I don't really know. I don't really know. But regardless, we'll see you in the next episode. But until that next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.